Hey, what's going on, guys? This is your boy C. Will back to you with another video. Super Saturday. Why? Because, man, I've been waiting. Been waiting a while. Yep. Oh, I know you see it. You see it. This is a <laughs> rare breed. This is unicorn. You don't get a chance to see this often. You don't get a chance to see this all the time because it's usually in my computer. But, man, look at this. All right, I'm not going to play with these too, too much longer. But, yeah, this is the RTX... 3080 Ti, Asus, Asus, Rock Strix version. And yeah, the reason why I got this right here is because have you ever thought about undervolting your GPU? And you're probably wondering what undervolting is. Well, hey, that's why I'm here. But before we get started, if this is your first time here, welcome here. We do everything tech, all things tech. Whatever it is, we like to do it. If you're a returning viewer, I appreciate you the most because you keep everything going. So if you want to see more content like this, make sure that you hit like, hit the bell, hit subscribe, do all that YouTube algorithm stuff, let YouTube know that you like your boy. And man, never miss any of my uploads, none of my notifications. And so make sure that you hit those things so you don't miss it. And so, yeah, let's get started. So let me explain what undervolting is and why you want to do it with your GPU. And specifically, we're going to be talking about NVIDIA GPUs today. Um, I don't have an AMD GPU to test, but that's going to be coming pretty soon. Uh, but if you have an NVIDIA GPU, uh, you could definitely be able to follow this step-by-step -step guide today. Um, I'm definitely I'm excited about this because of the results that I've been able to get for my GPU, uh, which affects everything else uh, within the case. So uh, undervolting um, is real simple. That means that you're lowering the actual voltage um, that's needed to actually run the card and hit boost clocks and all that stuff, and I'll explain that. Um, but you lower the voltage um, instead of letting it do its own thing and be all over the place. And usually if you have a really high performing card, um, it's going to use a lot of power. It's going to cause a lot of heat, um, which for NVIDIA GPUs, um, it's actually, you know, it works best doing the opposite, meaning that the lower the temp, the higher the boost clock. And so and it works the same way with CPUs and stuff like that as well, especially with AMD CPUs. The you know lower the temp, higher the boost clock, and so I believe the um, and I may put some stuff up on the screen, but for this card, the actual boost clock and gaming mode has two different modes on this on this GPU. It has a gaming mode and an OC mode. So the gaming mode, the actual boost clock is like eighteen fifteen, one thousand eight hundred fifteen megahertz, and then with with it in OC mode, it's like one thousand eight hundred forty five megahertz, um, but I've actually been getting um, a lot higher boost clocks, um, usually around about the 1935, 1950 um, on this car. So obviously, you know, when the temps are low, that's when, it, you know, it does its best, right? Um, but consistent between 1920 and 1935, right? And so... You know, and the way that I've been able to measure that is using MSI Afterburner. You've seen some of my overlay stuff like that. We, we'll be able to take a look at that. And I'll put everything in the links in the description um, below. Everything that you're going to need, we're going to walk through it step by step. But um, those are some of the boost costs I've been able to uh, to get. Um, but the cost of that is also, you know, when you're running stuff like that, as soon as the temp starts to go up, you'll see the actual boost clock will go down in the megahertz. And so, so the goal today is to be able to show you how to get lower temps, better performance, higher boost clocks, lower fan speed, lower power usage. And that all five of those things are key um, to the longevity of your actual card and your equipment and all that good stuff, especially if you plan on doing a small form factor bill. Man, can you imagine putting this in a small form factor bill? And I actually have a case. I got a video that's going to be coming up real soon that we're going to be talking about that, uh, the Cooler Master NR200P. Um, yeah, we're going to be moving over to a smaller case and we're going to test that out, do a full review on it. So stay tuned again, hit like, hit subscribe, hit the bell. So you receive our notifications. So you don't miss that. But those are the five things that you're going to receive as benefits. Um, if you follow everything by the T. So let's get to it. I got to put this joker back in the case so we could be able to take a look at it. All right, good people. So now here's the thing. Um, I got everything set up on my screen that we're going to need. Uh, first things first, you definitely need to download Heaven Benchmark. 
uh, MSI Afterburner, and then Tech Power Up um, GPU Z. And here's the reason why you need these. So, uh, Heaven Benchmark is free. Um, so, as you can see here, uh, once you download this, you get it installed. Um, we're going to use it. That's what's running uh, right here. And I have my overlay, um, you know, with the, you know, all the information and stuff that I need. Um, you may not have this configured this way, and that's okay, uh, which is the reason why I want you to download Tech Power Up um, GPU Z. Um, and so this is going to give you all of the actual numbers that you need um, in terms of like temps, uh, you know, clock speeds and all that good stuff. Um, but if you're familiar with Afterburner, you could, you know, you're still going to need this either way it goes. So make sure that you download Afterburner, but don't worry about if you can't see the overlay, that type of stuff. Um, all right. So once you have that downloaded and installed, step two, uh, what we're going to do is actually, um, I've already done this. Um, you're going to let Unigine Heaven run for about 20 minutes. And the reason why you want to do that, you know, before we actually get started with anything, because you want Unigine, you want the actual GPU to be saturated. And so what that means is that uh, we want to mimic um, you actually playing games. And so that's important because you want to make sure that you get accurate numbers. And so looking at this right now, um, it says that my 3080 Ti temp um, is 73 degrees. That's usually, I usually max out. Like right now, my room, my ambient room temperature is about 70 degrees uh, Fahrenheit, 21 degrees uh, Celsius. And so typically when I'm playing games for, you know, hours or whatever the case may be, um, my max temp on my GPU stopped. Because everything is on stock right now, it's between seventy-two to seventy-three degrees, which is actually pretty good, you know, uh, for a high-power GPU. Um, and I get into some of the reasons behind that as well. As you can see, my clock, um, and then the power that's being used, three hundred, like I seen this top out at about three hundred and ninety watts. Yeah. Now my GPU, like if GPU says it's supposed to use three fifty, but as you can see, I'm running Unigine at like 1440p, 99% usage. But as you can see, the wattage is almost 400 watts. So <laughs> that's a that's another video um, that I made about that. Um, and the, the other reason why I want to do this is because like I said earlier, when you're running, um, when you're running your card and you know, and it's going and it gets saturated, uh, once the temps go up, that's where you could be able to get what your actual sustained boost clocks are. And so I've been jumping around between 1905 to 1920. Um, and that's where it's been. So you can see it's at 1905 right now. Um, but it's been jumping around between 1905 to 1920. So we're going to keep track of that. Uh, we're going to actually jot some of this information down. Um, as, as you can see, my fan speed is at 83%. Uh, which is 2270 RPM um, and the voltage, GPU voltage. Um, I actually have that listed here, but it's also listed here on MSI Afterburner. So it's jumping around, you know, uh, 1036 millivolts. That's the actual voltage. Um, so keep that in mind. Your temp is here. Um, memory clock speed is here. GPU clock speed is here. Um, so those are the things that, you know, so once you have all this stuff downloaded, uh, so I can actually get rid of this, so I can pull this up. Uh, once you get all this stuff downloaded, um, we can actually start, you know, playing around with some of these. And this is uh, Tech Power of GPU Z. I like this too, because it gives you a lot of the same information that's here. So if you're not familiar with the overlay, you just come here and say, okay, hey, this is my GPU clock speed, uh, which is the boost clock. Uh, GPU temperature 73 and this also gives you more information because it'll let you know your memory temperature as well which is 80 uh, degrees it'll give you the fan speed um, and all that good stuff um, if you go down here at the bottom it tells you your GPU voltage um, as well uh, your power consumption it tells you about CPU temps um, and then it'll tell you what the actual um, the different power uh, voltages and also uh, wattage per 8 pin. So like for my card, it takes three 8 pin connectors and all individual 8 pins, uh, which is needed when you run a car like this. Uh, but it'll tell you how much watt, you know, the wattage that's being pulled per 8 pin. Um, and then it'll actually give you a uh, uh, board power draw 
uh, which is the total, which is the same thing. This matches here. And you'll see that number jump around. And so, yeah, this is, these are the, the tools that we will use in order to be able to keep track um, of what we're doing. And so what we're going to do now is actually take down the stats. So first things up, basically the numbers that you see here, because this has been running for 20 plus minutes now, um, you want to get the max temps, right? And so um, I've seen this get up to 73 degrees. So we'll say GPU temp. 73 degrees. Um, I also want to keep track of the highest boost clock. Um, and I've actually seen this get up, you know, after having this run, max boost, 1920 megahertz. Makes sense, right? Um, and then we have the fan speed. Want to keep track of that fan speed. 83% and 22, let's say, I'm just going to say 2280 RPM. And then the last thing um, I want to keep track of is actually what the voltage. And so looks like it's been bouncing around, but the voltage is to, in order to keep these clock speeds, I would say 1062. So voltage. 1062. All right. So these are the stats before under voltage. And I'm just going to type this out stats after under voltage. We're going to actually run a, a benchmark score, see what score we get, you know, beforehand. And then, you know, once we get the actual score and we do the actual under volt. We'll see, we'll actually run a benchmark again to see what type of score that we receive. Um, the goal is to be able to lower the temps, lower the power draw, lower the fan speed, uh, and either get the same performance or better performance. And typically I've been seeing uh, where I, I've been able to get better performance. Um, you know, so once you, you know, once I show you the actual steps in doing this, um, um, you can actually be able to do this for yourself. Okay, so the benchmark finish, and as you can see, the score that we receive is 3374. Uh, FPS is 133. Here are the settings that I use, uh, 2560, 1440. Um, I just maxed out everything, ultra, extreme. So just so you know, um, you can set that up when you're first starting up Unigen. Um, but the score was... 33.74 and then FPS 133.9 um, oh one other thing that I forgot that I wanted to keep track of was the actual uh, how much power was being used here and I think oh well I just saw it get up to 400 watts so you just saw that right <laughs> so I want to put in here GPU power 400 watts and so yeah all right so now that i have that what i am going to do is actually close unigen and you're probably wondering why am i closing unigen well the reason why i'm closing unigen is because i want the car to go back down to being normal and i don't know if that makes sense <laughs> But I don't want, you know, when we get ready to start to make the changes, um, I want the the car to actually cool back down and all that different type of stuff. Because once we make these changes and then we'll let Unigen run after it runs for a while, um, you'll be able to see what the actual max temps are. So I just want to be able to replicate how I started. And that's important. You want to you want to be able to replicate how you started. And so. Um, we got the stats, all this stuff is, you know, before the undervolting. So now MSI afterburner. So let's take a look at this. So now MSI afterburner. So a couple of things that we're going to do. Um, you have the option, you see right here where it says curve editor. Um, you can either click this and it's going to pull up this actual screen here, or you could do control F on your keyboard 
And it's also going to pull up the same thing. All right. So what we're going to do is actually I am going to slide this down right here. So on the left hand side, you will have the actual frequency core clock. Um, and then at the bottom is the voltage. So starts at 700, goes all the way up to 1250 on the voltage. Starts at 500 on the frequency, goes all the way up to 3000. All right. So what we're going to do, uh, we actually are going to go up here to where it says core clock. In here, you're going to hit minus or dash, whatever you say, minus. And then we're going to do 250. Hit enter. So what this does, the actual graph is going to come down. Uh, essentially, we just underclock the actual GPU. Um, and... A safe spot to start off at is about 950 millivolts. So it's 950 is right here. And what we're going to do is you're going to take one of these dots. You're going to left click on the mouse and you're going to raise this up. And what we are going to do when you get ready to raise this up, we're going to raise it up to whatever the actual the max boost um, that we receive while running at these temperatures. So. Um, I am actually going to raise this up and you'll see it go up on the left hand side. Uh, I am going to raise this up to 1920. Now, if you want to get exact numbers, you can hold down control to use your actual arrow keys uh, to go up or down. I'm actually one at 1920. And so once you have that, um, you hit enter. You're going to go up here to this check mark right here. And you're going to hit which is apply so you're applying any changes that you've just done you click apply and then boom you'll see the curve so it's going to start here you know at you know as far as the actual frequency and then it's going to slowly go up and here you see it plateaus that means that for this voltage you know 950 it's going to max out at what we chose which was 1920 megahertz and so and it's going to stay like that across the board so now if we run unigen again we should see a difference in in temps and all this different type of stuff all right so now before i run unigen again i'm actually going to i know the numbers for my car because i've done this and i got it to exactly where i want it um and so what you would need to do um, when you get ready to start playing around with this um as you can see down here at the bottom um, this actually, the the actual voltage numbers are, they either increase by 25 millivolts or they decrease by 25 millivolts. So if you start off at 950, what you're going to do is, okay, hey, you, you see, you're going to run the actual benchmark again, make sure everything is stable. And then what you can start doing is actually decreasing by 25. So... Um, in order to get this back to where it originally was, you can hit this actual arrow with the circle. It just resets everything. So when you hit that, boom, now this goes back to normal. Uh, the actual curve goes back to normal. So now you can be able to test out a different voltage. And so once you hit the sweet spot, so you'll keep doing that. And so let me just go back over here. So step three is going to be start with 950 millivolts. Choose your boost clock, which was the 1920 for my car. Your every card is going to be a little bit different. Um, and then start decreasing by 25 millivolts until your system starts to crash and i know don't be alarmed <laughs> when you start to decrease the millivolts you will get to a point where your system becomes unstable uh, you may see it like your monitors may black out or your system may restart everything is fine um, the way that your gpu is set up it's going to you know run the way that it needs to run and, and if it finds itself where it can't run off of that voltage um, then your system will just restart. Um, it's not going to harm your GPU. It's not going to harm any of your equipment. Um, and I've never ran into any issues. And you could be able to look that up online. Um, but you want to decrease by 25 until you get to the point where it's not stable. So once you, once you get back here and you say, okay, hey, if I hit Control F, 
again, once you, you have to go back in here, negative 250, hit enter. It's going to bring this down. So let's say you started at 950, you brought it down to 925. Then you brought it down again to 900. Then you brought it down again to 875. And let's say at 875 and you were still trying to boost up to 920. And once you did that, let's say that your system wasn't able to run the benchmark uh, through Unigen. Um, and it start freaking out. Okay, that's fine. Then that means that, okay, you can't do 875. So you go back up here, you reset, and you move back up to 900. Try it again. And so it's a little bit tedious, but once you find your sweet spot, it works wonders. And so, um, again, for my car, what we're going to do is we actually are going to, let me go back up here, negative 250. Um I found a sweet spot at 900 millivolts. So I'm going to take this dot here and I'm going to raise this up to 1920. I'm going to hit the check mark. And then now this is my curve. Now I've done this, right? I've done this part. And so what we are going to do, we're going to run Unigen again. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to let this run for another 15, 20 minutes, and then you'll see what the actual max temps and all the other stuff will be, and we'll make sure that we document that. Okay. All right, so I let this run for 20 minutes, and as you can see, I'm just going to pull this back down here to the right. So stats after undervolting. So GPU temp. Uh, the max that I saw with this um, has actually been 66 degrees. Max boost is actually 1950, which is amazing. Uh, what's next? Fan speed, 71%. I think that's kind of maxed out at about 17 thought I saw it go higher than 17. Let's see. 1749. 1752. I go with that. 1752 RPM. Voltage. 900. GPU power. Power draw. See that? Now, first of all, we went from 73 degrees to 66. So what's that? We drop four, three. So we drop seven degrees. That's awesome. We dropped seven degrees uh, on the GPU power. We went from max 400 watts um, to basically, this is about three, 334 max. 335, 336. Let's say it's about 336. So we dropped 64 watts. That's insane. 343. So 343. Let's go with that. 343. So we went from 400 watts down to four. So 67, 67. We dropped 67 watts on power. That's crazy. Um, and so last thing that we need to check is the actual benchmark score. So let's run the benchmark and then we'll come back. Okay. So we got the benchmark score. So we scored 33, 43 FPS, 132. We went from 33, 74 to 33, 43 on the score. Uh, -huh. In FPS, we went from 133.9 to 132. That's pretty much the same performance. Um, those numbers are negligible. So we got a higher boost clock, lower temps, lower fan speed, lower wattage, and still get the same performance. That's a win-win. Y'all see that? The numbers speak for itself. So taking a look at this. So now, benchmark score. 33, 43, and then 132.7 FPS.
So, yeah, that's a win win in my book. So just taking a look here, looking at the actual the difference. Um, like I said, you know, once you find your actual sweet spot, um, it's a it's a win. You know, you have acquired a system. Um, you'll definitely, especially if you, you know, plan on doing like a small form factor with a real powerful GPU. Um, this will also allow your GPU to last longer um, because you're lowering the temps. You know, temps and hardware don't go together when it comes to electronics. So lowering the temps, um, you're lowering the fan speed. Your fans, your fans will last longer because they're rotating at a lower RPM. Um, all this good stuff, lower wattage, you know, lower, uh, you know, voltage. It's a win. So these are the reasons why you want to undervolt your GPU. And you could play around with this a little bit more if you wanted to, but Max Boost, 1950. Max was 1950. Consistent, I would probably say, because I chose 1920, um, but consistent, um, 1935 is is pretty much um that's what that's been my testing uh that's what as far as like the consistent boost clock has been 1935 um so it'll jump between you know if the temp happens to go up um you know it'll jump around but yeah i mean and you'll see sometimes it'll probably hit 67 um but for the most part 66 um uh, but still you know seven degrees so you you drop six to seven degrees off of your gpu which allows you to be able to save on your power save on your fan speed save on your voltage you know all that different type of stuff that is a win in my book um so yeah that's the reason why you want to undervolt your gpu now i tell you what last thing here um something that i'm going to tell you that you should do um, once you run, you know, you could run the benchmark, run it a couple of times, make sure that that works for you. Um, then I will actually start testing on multiple games that you like to play. Uh, and the reason being is because some games, you know, it's a lot more stuff that's going on than what Unigen, you know, benchmark is going to have you do. Um, so some games going to be running DLSS. Uh, you may be doing 4K. You may be doing some other stuff. And, um, Every game runs a little bit differently. So test out your games. Um, if you find yourself where, oh, OK, hey, you're not stable um, in any of your games, uh, then that means that you um, definitely need to make sure that you actually up your voltage um, because it may not be enough to be able to run. And then pretty soon you'll find, well, OK, hey, all of your games run fine. Then you got your stuff. Last thing that you should do once you got everything right. Um, you can actually go here. Um, you can actually go to settings. Make sure you um, go start with Windows. You click OK. Um, and then you actually need to hit the save button. You hit the save button. It's going to give you uh, different profiles that you can be able to save this up under. Um, I already have one saved up under number one. So I'm just going to select it again and then boom. So now when it starts up, you know, you can be able, if it's not already on there, you could just be able to hit one. Hit the check mark to apply and then boom, you know, whatever games that you're doing, you can be able to run at these actually settings and then you'll be good to go. So win win. So let me know what you think down in the comments below. Um, if this video brought you any value, uh, make sure that you hit like, hit subscribe, hit the bell so you receive all my notifications. Um, definitely like the video that lets YouTube, you know, with the whole algorithm type thing, lets YouTube know that you like your boy. And uh, let yeah, let me know down in the description below uh, what type of car that you have what settings that you was able to get after following um, my step-by-step -step guide and you know if it helped you out um i would definitely like to hear some success stories um because um i wish the cars came like this out of the box but you got to find your sweet spot you know every piece of silicon is different and so but yeah once you find out what works for you it's going to be great and you're going to be awesome and yeah happy gaming peace